What's up YouTube, my name is Batman, and I know a lot of people hate Call of Duty, and the typical complaints you hear are either 1, it's for little kids, or 2, it takes no skill. Both of these things are true to an extent, but simply complaining with one of those two taglines isn't going to change anything, because these aren't easily relatable complaints. They are easily shrugged off as the opinion of a bitter whiner, and they are also hard to put in tangible terms of what it is in-game that actually demonstrates the lack of skill and the pandering to a significantly younger audience every year. Because when people make these complaints, if if you ask them to supply the reasoning behind it, they often have a hard time articulating in a clear manner the specific, tangible, rational evidence that demonstrates a logical argument as to why Call of Duty requires less and less skill each year and preys on little kids at the same time. And it's not that these complaints are made by simple-minded people, I've made them myself. It's that the developers have been incredibly clever in the way they've implemented these strategies, making it very hard for us to put our finger on what it is exactly we don't like. But I have figured it out, and I want to share it with you, because the main reason that we can't bend the developers to our will and halt their treachery is that until we can provide rational evidence for our complaints, we cannot appeal to or unite the entirety of the COD clientele under one banner. If we want Call of Duty to change, we have to turn off its future potential customers, and again, simply saying the game takes no skill and is for little kids does not work. You have to explain why, and in this video, I will, so that when you complain as I do, as every COD player inevitably will, that we can register our complaints logically so that they will make sense to other players and together we shall bring down the evil empire and restore justice to the people. So I'm including some World at War clips uh, in this gameplay and that's because what this basically comes down to is comparing the current Call of Duty to what I would consider the first significant generation of COD multiplayer, World at War and COD 4. My basic premise is that the layout of the maps and the general theme of Call of Duty has been oversimplified and designed way too much with the goal of pandering to little kids. Again, you hear a lot these days about how Call of Duty is for little kids, especially when people are comparing it to other games, and I always thought this was kind of hyperbolic. I argued that it wasn't for little kids, but it attracted little kids more than other games simply because it had destroyed the skill gap in an unprecedented way, making it much easier to pick up and do well on at any age. But I got on World at War yesterday, and keep in mind, you know, I didn't actually play World at War when it came out, because I didn't have Xbox Live. My little brother got it used for Christmas last year, I borrowed it because I'm at that point with Black Ops 2 where there's nothing left for me to do really, I have overplayed it to the point that I take no satisfaction in it anymore. And I tried getting on older CODs that I actually did play when they were in their prime, and I've played a lot, uh, you know, I played some Modern Warfare 3, some Black Ops 1, but it was all hopelessly unfulfilling and depressing as well. So yesterday was my first experience ever on World at War, and I had a lot of fun on it, and basically came away thinking this was my favorite Call of Duty of all time, and I was really sad that I didn't get to play it in its prime, and when I compared it to modern Call of Duties, I was genuinely angry. Like, literally, I was upset, because Call of Duty today feels like an unfunny joke compared to what it was. There were a few distinct things that, for me, made World at War a much more enjoyable experience than modern Call of Duties, and I think what it really comes down to is the maps. And a lot of what I'm going to mention here can be applied to COD 4 as well, but I didn't want to specifically use COD 4 maps as an example, because I think the unbreakable spawn traps that were possible on a lot of those maps where a glaring flaw that shouldn't be looked to as an example of something COD did right. But as far as the rest of what I'm going to talk about with World at War maps goes, Call of Duty 4 also did these things very well. For starters, maps in World at War felt like actual combat scenarios. Maps on Black Ops 2 feel like fucking children's playgrounds, okay? And there are a couple of factors that determine the contrast. For starters, in World at War, the maps require a lot more skill to navigate. They allow for much more advanced tactics and they actually reward critical thinking. The cover you can use in gunfights isn't painfully obvious. There are a lot of piles of rubble, right? Just these oddly shaped mounds of dirt or wreckage that vary in size. A lot of machinery wreckage. You have airplane wings sticking out of the ground, crumbling walls with holes in them that are a variety of shapes and sizes. Statues, sometimes a full-size plane or train, etc, etc. None of these things were straight-up polygons with perfectly straight sides and 90-degree corners. This was cool for two reasons. For one, it added so much more variety to the gunfights exponentially with every different shaped piece of cover. And secondly, and this might even be more important, it made the maps feel a lot more natural and realistic, like this could be some place in real life. And they don't have that kind of cover anymore because, again, it's all about removing the skill gap. Most of the cover nowadays is very one-dimensional. You know, take a look at a map like slums. At the top of every single set of steps is a perfect little square sandbag. There's a lot of the rectangular 
orange dumpsters. There's a lot of these rectangular flaps sticking out of the walls at every corner in the courtyard. And then, of course, there are some cars, but they generally consist of straight lines and perfect corners, too. It's not very difficult for your brain to figure out where you should put your character's body. And even the rounded pieces of cover, like a barrel, it might as well be rectangular because it matches up with a hitbox perfectly. And the other big thing is all the cover nowadays is perfectly symmetrical, right? And you combine this with the fact that the maps themselves are perfectly symmetrical, which I'll talk about in a second. And what it means is that nobody ever has a distinct advantage on either side of any piece of cover. What it comes down to is who got to the piece of cover first. In fact, there isn't really a lot of usable co cover anymore, period. For instance, on a map like Hijacked, what the gunfight comes down to is who saw who first, because all the cover is totally penetrable. For instance, on that walkway hanging off the edge of the ship, I always laugh when I see stupid motherfuckers trying to head glitch that knocked over lawn chair at the other end, because it's not really cover. I don't have to aim for the head, I just shoot the lawn chair and get the kill. Same goes for that little structure on the opposite side of the map next to the B flag. The walls are totally penetrable. So if you're in that thing, you're basically out in the open. Same goes for the balconies and the entire first story of each building on Hijack. It's not really combat, it's more like hide-and-go-seek. Like, I can't see you right now, but if I did see you, the cover wouldn't save you. World at War maps are also much more intricately detailed, and I don't mean aesthetically like how they look, I'm talking about the lines of sight, the rushing routes, the flanking routes. A big part of that was because the maps weren't all perfectly symmetrical. You know, almost every single map in the last three Call of Duties has been symmetrical. They build one half of a map, and then they copy and paste it onto the other side. And, you know, they move a couple things around, or more commonly, they'll just lower the elevation of one side a little bit. Obviously, examples would be hijack, grind, plaza, slums, express, just copy and pasted one half of the map onto the other half. Less obvious examples would be like drone, where the map itself, if folded in half, wouldn't match up perfectly, but all of the lines of sight still do match up perfectly. If you're in one of the far side buildings overlooking that grassy straightaway, you know what I'm talking about? Structurally, the buildings are different, but the windows are perfectly lined up. If you get towards the middle where B is, both sides have little barrels perfectly lined up next to the factory to defend B against each spawn. On. Each side has a pathway coming up from that grassy straightaway out to the exact same corresponding spot on the middle of the street on either side of a van. Chopper pad lines up with the walkway and both spawns are wide open with a van in the middle. So it looks somewhat different from one side to the next, but it plays exactly the same on both sides. The world at war maps are rarely symmetrical. Even if the layout is somewhat symmetrical, like if you could fold the mini map in half and it would look very similar, the lines of sight never are because every room is different. Every room has multiple entrances and various piles of rubble and crumbling walls and it makes for much more dynamic gameplay, you know? I don't need all these player triggered events and crashing gas stations just bring back rooms that aren't all identical. Now, this style of map terrain was discontinued for two reasons. First being that an asymmetrical map where every room is unique is going to take a significantly longer time to memorize for a new player. A new player would have to play probably at least a dozen matches on the map before it would be committed to memory, which means for those dozen or so matches, the new player is playing at a severe disadvantage to other players that do have the map memorized, statistically decreasing the chances that said new player feels like a Banff demigod during his first 30 minutes of playtime, which dramatically increases the chance that said player doesn't keep playing. The second reason is that because the map is so intricately detailed, it's going to allow for much more complex tactics, and the map itself will reward heavily those who concoct complex tactics and employ them. And this basically just comes down to the sheer volume of flanking routes and lines of sight available. You know, in most positions on a map in World at War, because of how interlinked all the houses and backyards and buildings are, you could be attacked from basically any direction at any time. Whereas in Black Ops 2, every position will be capped at three potential vulnerabilities. For instance, on slums, if you're in that middle courtyard, you know with certainty that there are only three routes from the enemy spawn that they can come to you. The two main entrance points to the courtyard and the hole in the wall in that one building. If I'm in the middle building in standoff, they can get me in the front door, the back door, climb through the window. First story in one of those hijacked buildings, front door, back door, side door. But if I'm on World at War and you know there's like three houses bunched together, I'm in one and the enemy's in the other, and I have to stay on my toes because motherfucker can come through the front door, back door, side door, the other side door, the kitchen window, the hole in the living room. Or he could climb the shed to my second story and come down the goddamn living room stairs or climb down the random ladder in the kitchen. Or he could just be camping in the motherfucking attic. It adds a level of excitement to the gameplay that doesn't exist in Call of Duty anymore. And because it takes more skill, it also gives you more satisfaction when you do kill someone. And lastly, from a purely aesthetic point of view, the maps these days are unrealistic to the point they might as well be marketing to five-year-olds. World at War had this sort of gritty war vibe. 
vibe to it. Like, it's still unrealistic, but it feels more like Saving Private Ryan, whereas today's Call of Duty feels like Power Rangers. You don't fight on foreign war-torn battlefields anymore. Today we fight in skate parks, paintball courses, ski resorts, Playboy mansions, Playboy yachts, a concert stage, and Hollywood. So, yeah, it's for little kids, and yeah, it doesn't take scale, or at least it tries not to. And it's really sort of depressing, because the game, this franchise, could have been so magnificent, but it lost itself in a blind pursuit of profits. I hope it was worth it. Please remember to rate. This is Batman, signing out. Way to step up.